Alrighty, let's have a look at graphs and charts in Microsoft Excel. Now, it's great that Excel is a very powerful program in working with numbers, and it loves numbers. And I'm not a fan of numbers, but I love making sense of numbers. And that's what graphs and charts let us do. They help us to make sense of the numbers in a visual way. So what we're going to do is we're going to see a couple of different charts and graphs in Microsoft Excel and how they tell us information. For example, here we have a high school Shavathon fundraiser and I've got some information. So I've got grade and money raised. I've got the 8s to 12s and how much each grade raised. Now if I had a whole lot of a whole lot more information and I wanted to see at a glance who made the most money, who made the least money, it I'd have to look at the numbers and sort of work it out and it would take me forever, okay? So I use a chart to do this and I'm going to use a column chart, okay? You sometimes call it a bar chart. So I'm going to first select everything. That's the first step. Select everything that you want to be in your graph. Step one. Then I'm going to go to insert. Here I am on insert. And I'm going to go to bars and charts. Here we go. Column bar or bar charts. Now I don't see a column there. So I'm going to click and I can see there's a couple here. And as I move my mouse over them, it shows me a whole bunch there, but they're not the ones I'm looking for. So I'm going to click on more. Okay. More column charts. There we go. Let's have a look here. Clustered column, money. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, I, you know what? I kind of like, I kind of like this one uh, with the different colors. So I'm going to click on that one. Okay, that's the one I want, and I'm click OK. There's my chart. Super quick and super easy. Make it a bit bigger there. You can see what's happening. Great. So uh, it says chart title. We can change that if we want to. Here on the left hand side, on my y axis, I've got the money, the the sort of calculations there two four six eight up to 1200 rand and I've then got each one of these for the grades here's my key down at the bottom on my x-axis I've got uh, grade 8 is there grade 9 is there 10 11 and 12 and I can see right away well grade 10 obviously raised the most money and grade 11 uh, didn't do so good and that is a column chart right there much easier hey let's have a look at another example mobile phones so here we have various mobile phone brands and their percentage market share around the world hmm so let's see uh, who had the most now I think this has already been sorted so we can see but you know what what kind of graph is the one I want you to pay attention to now a bar graph could work for this but if I want to look at something out of a whole all right, it's kind of think about a slice of pizza, all right? One piece of pizza out of the whole pizza. I love pizza, what can I say? So here we go again. I select everything, select everything, insert, and here it is here. There's my pizza, <laughs> my pie charts. Click over there, and you can choose 2D or 3D. I mean, hey, knock yourself out. So I'm going to go with just a basic one for now just to show you. There it is there, and right away I can see, hey, look at this. All right, it looks like Apple are doing quite well. Samsung are definitely doing very well. So Apple and Samsung, do you see how much easier it is to see what, what the data is telling us, okay, because of the type of graph. So when you want to see a graph that shows you percentages of something, so something out of the whole, pie chart is definitely worth it. If you want to see something in terms of the largest and the smallest, well, a bar chart could be pretty useful. How about another one here? Um, Android operating systems, um, Windows operating systems, iOS. Okay, operating systems around the world. Let's have a look. I'm going to select these. And again, you could use one of those two charts. So insert. I'll show you what they look like. Let's go down, choose a column one here. There we go. And there I'm using a bar chart or a column chart there. Okay, one way of doing it. Or take that away. And I could also then go insert and choose a pie chart. Whoa, sorry buddy, pie chart, there you go, okay. Now let's look at this one. Here you can see I have my Ekurhuleni uh, statement, well, the information from the statement. And I've got rates, water, electricity, refuse and sewage, and how much it costs each month. So now I want to see specifically electricity. How did electricity go up or down for each month? I'm going to select January to July, first six months of the year, and I'm going to select electricity. So I'm going to go from January to July, just the numbers. Now you'll notice that I selected them, uh, they're not like right next to each other. So I hold down the control key. I'm going to do that again for you guys, right? So I click and drag, select the first bunch, control key down, control key down, click and drag again. 
So now I've selected two things that are not consecutive, not right next to each other. Okay, remember that. Good shortcut to know. Insert. The best sort of graph for this is to see, did it come up, did it come down? It's a line graph. I want to see change over time. Change over time. And that's what a line graph does. So I'm going to click over here. I'm just going to go for like the first one. And wow, check at that. There it is. So let's start off with five. We start here at 500. Uh, well, just under, and we go up, and then we came down, and there was like nothing here, okay, because I don't, no one was in the house at that time, okay, long story, and then it started to go up, and then, oh my word, it shot right up, so something happened, something happened there, this is the graph that we would use to see change over time, the line graph, it's quite useful.